<laughs> As you may know, Ganesh is a patron of the arts, known for assisting writers to get past writers' block. Remind us who Ganesh is. We'll get there. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> Ganesh is the son of Shiva and the Lady Parvati. Gods, or, or rather, avatars or facets of the universal God. And since Ganesh is a patron of the arts, I thought it fitting to start off the storytelling today with how Ganesh came to be as he is. Back when Shiva and Parvati were but a single couple, living alone on Mount Kailasa. They were relatively happy, but Parvati felt that they needed children. And Shiva, eh, not so much. But the day came when Shiva decided that he was going to go on a, quote, brief trip off into the high, high peaks of the Himalayas to practice yoga, to consort with the Devas and the Asuras. Some time alone, so to speak. <coughs> Leaving poor Parvati back at the house with nothing to do. Now Parvati spent several days on her own, but finally the idea came to her she could do more. So she went to her cosmetics case and pulled out a pot of sandalwood paste. And taking a large handful, she began to mold it into a small figure. And seeing as there was more needed, she took a scraper and scraped the sandalwood paste off her own skin and applied it to the figure until she had a small baby form, a little boy. She breathed life into the small figure, and it became her son, and she named him Ganesh. Now, time for the gods is not necessarily the same as time for us. Now, certainly a short while for Shiva stretched on and on, till Ganesh was a bright and active little toddler. And like many small boys, he loved his mother dearly. And she, of course, was quite fond of him. And he would go and play around the house, and occasionally she would allow him outdoors. But he particularly liked, at this time, the various weaponry his father had left hanging on the walls of the home, for practical and decorative reasons, both. And so it was when Parvati said to little Ganesh, I am going to go take a bath. Will you guard for me? Little Ganesh said, oh, yes, I'm a big boy. And he got himself a spear. And he went out in front of the house and began to pace to patrol in front of the door. <laughs> Little tiny boy, big long spear. <laughs> it was around this time that Lord Shiva rose from his position of yoga and decided that he really, really, really missed his consort. And he was eager to get home to see her. So, jumping astride his bull, Nandi, he rode back to Mount Kalaisa. And there, as he approached the door of his house, he saw this little figure going back and forth in front of the door. This long spear waving back and forth. Shiva was not in a mood for patience. And he came to the door and he said, small creature, get away from my door, get out of my way. I must go in and see my wife. And Ganesh, seeing this large man approach, planted the spear in front of him and said, you shall not pass for my mother is bathing and she shall not be interrupted. Shiva, creator and destroyer, looked at the little one and said, get out of my way. I am off to see my wife. 
And Ganesh looked back defiantly. You shall not pass, for my mother is bathing, and she shall not be interrupted. And Shiva at this point lost his patience, took out his trident, and swept it across, removing the head of small Ganesh and sending it far, far off into the skies. Well, the ruckus at the door caught Parvati's attention, and she came rushing over, damp, wrapped in a towel. Shiva, what have you done? That was our son, Ganesh. And Shiva looked at the small body, and he looked at his consort, and he knew that in the interest of matrimonial bliss, he was going to have to do something about this. <laughs> I'll fix this, he said. Wait here. And as only a god can, he ran to the north, to the west, to the south, to the east, looking all around for a new head. Until he came across an aged elephant collapsed by the side of a road. And he looked to the elephant, and he said, Lord Elephant, how dare you? And the elephant opened his eyes and looked at Lord Shiva and said, I'm old. I have grandchildren and great-grandchildren roaming the jungles around here, and I have had a long and full life, but it is coming to an end. I cannot rise, I cannot move, so I cannot forgive proper obeisance to you, Lord Shiva, but I honor you. And Shiva looked at the wrinkled brow of wisdom and the great ears for sensitive hearing and the long, sensitive nose to sniff out trouble. And he said, Lord Elephant, may I have a favor of you? And the elephant said, anything, Lord Shiva, anything I have is yours. Shiva said, may I have your head? And the elephant said, certainly, Lord Shiva, it is yours. So Shiva quieted the elephant, watched the eyes close, and then took his trident and removed the head from the elephant and carried it back to the home in Mount Kailasa. Now, you can imagine Parvati's reaction seeing her husband lugging an elephant's head home. You are not putting that on the shoulders of Ganesh. He won't be able to walk, he won't be able to move, he'll kind of roll. And she even said, this will balance out. You shall see. And he put the head upon the shoulders of Ganesh. And the head was joined to the body, and the body began to fill. And the head began to change form a bit. Until they had a small but husky young boy with an elephant's head. And tusks, but a very, very human smile. Hello, mother. Hello, Lord Father. It's good to see you again. And to this day, Ganesh is depicted with his head of an elephant. And to this day, he is likely to have that very human smile.